I would like you to close your eyes. It's Friday, the 5th of June, in the year 2037, and you are participating in TEDx Glasgow. Are you here physically, or are you here virtually? If you're here physically, how did you get here? If you're here virtually, are you feeling the emotion in the room? What do you do for a living, or how do you fill your days in retirement? How are your children or your grandchildren learning? What technology are you wearing? Or what technology do you have in your pocket? I would like you to open your eyes. This is Charlie, and Charlie's six. Or if you ask her, she's six and three quarters. And Charlie's my daughter. And she's just like any other little girl her age. She loves Disney princesses. She loves playing with her friends. She loves going to her clubs. And she actually really loves school. But she's a little different than you and I, because Charlie has always grown up with technology. The iPad had just been released when she was born, and she could use it before she walked. When she did learn to walk at around 14 months, she walked to the TV and swiped it. <laughs> and looked at me, she couldn't talk, quizzically, as if to say, Mum, that's not working. <laughs> and technology will impact every aspect of Charlie's life. So we're going to go on a journey with Charlie, and we're going to have a look at what a day in the life for Charlie might be like when she's 26. And it's highly likely that Charlie will have multiple implanted chipsets, or indeed biometric tattoos, that will be monitoring every aspect of her body, her heart rate, her blood pressure, her vitamins, her mineral levels, her nutrients, her blood sugars. It will monitor her sleep, her exercise, how her body's performing. It will also monitor all of the food and drink that she consumes as well. And this capability, in conjunction with biometric measures, like retinal scanning or hand and vein geometry, will allow Charlie to enter buildings with a swipe of a hand, or countries with a scan and a swipe. She'll be able to buy things just by picking them up and walking out the store. And all of that data will be pumped to Charlie's own personal data store. And only she will have access to who she grants that data to and what they can use it for. And one artificial intelligence personal assistant that Charlie has, we'll call him Jarvis, has access to Charlie's data store. And Jarvis works with Charlie to manage her life, help her manage her life, and monitor what's going on. And as Charlie wakes on that morning in 2037, Jarvis is monitoring her sleep rhythms based on the data that's coming from her chipsets and will only waken her when she's at optimal physical and mental readiness for the day ahead. And as she wakes, Jarvis presents around the room a number of holograms with information and data and videos that Charlie's asked to be ready for that day ahead. It might be the news, it might be information that she needs for her work that day, She's probably ignoring my invite to come to dinner on the Sunday. <laughs> and as she moves around the house, those holograms will move with her. Imagine. And just then, her holographic personal trainer arrives, who knows everything Charlie's eaten and drunk. Gone are the days of Dr. Honest, I only had two glasses of wine. <laughs> yeah. And her personal trainer will know what she's been exercising like. It'll have data from her chipsets. It will know what she's got planned, what events she has coming up. And it will work her accordingly. And then she goes down for breakfast, and Jarvis has been working with her 3D-printed chef to prepare breakfast. <laughs> and that breakfast will have every nutrient and mineral that she needs for the day ahead, because it's analysing the data that's coming from her own body. It still might be Cocoa Pop flavoured, but it will get her ready for the day. And as she's leaving, she speaks to her house robot. 
and she gives it instructions on what she would like done while she's out. It will make her bed, tidy her room, do her washing and ironing. I think I'd like one of these right now. And as she's leaving, Jarvis says, Charlie, remember you've got that party tonight and you've not picked something to wear. Charlie says, oh, I forgot about that. Could you help me? What are the options? And in 20 years' time, Charlie's body will be regularly 3D body scanned. And every item of clothing and footwear that she owns will be a perfect fit. No longer will she need to hunt the short rails or put plasters on her shoes because her heels are hurting. Everything she owns will be a perfect fit. And many of those items will be 3D printed. So Charlie asked Jarvis, show me the options, Jarvis, for tonight. But while you're at it, could you get my friend Kate, because she's coming too, and we want to look her best. So together with Kate, they use gesture control and voice to flip through the options that night. And they both select the best dress that Charlie's going to look fantastic in later on that evening. And Charlie says to Jarvis, Jarvis, could you get that 3D printed and ready at my hotel room tonight? Jarvis says, no problem, Charlie. Have a great day. And then, just as she's leaving, her driverless car or automated drone arrives to pick her up. Sometimes she'll take that journey alongside neighbours or friends going in the same direction. Other times she might be on her own. She might catch up on her favourite TEDx talk or prepare for work, or she might finally call me back and let me know she's, whether she's coming for dinner or not. And when she gets to work, she actually gets out a few hundred metres before she gets there, and through her augmented reality contact lenses, she has information overlaid on her field of vision. Information about the people she's passing in the street. Information that they are willing to share. Imagine what this could be like in the pubs and clubs of the future. <laughs> <clears throat> and she gets to work. And as they say, she's stuck in at school. And Charlie today is assisting in a heart transplant surgery. But the heart is not from a donor. The heart has been 3D printed to an exact biological match of the patient that's receiving the new heart. It's a really tricky thing to do with 3D printing. Because hearts are not, and other organs are not 100% solid. And are very, very difficult to 3D print. Because it prints in layers. And essentially the weight of itself can cave it in. But recent breakthroughs have meant they've been able to print it inside a gel. Which maintains the structure of the organ until the printing has finished. And Charlie, alongside senior surgeons, again supported through augmented reality contact lenses, and robotic surgical assistants in the operating room, perform the heart surgery with the patient. No more anti-rejection drugs. No longer that lengthy matching process. And the operation's been a great success. And Charlie's heading to a party. But the party's in London and she's in Glasgow. How is she going to get there? Well, she goes on the Hyperloop. Glasgow to London, 35 minutes, 750 miles an hour, shot down a tube, yeah? And she's going to be there on time for a party. She puts on her 3D printed dress, meets her friend Kate, and she has a fantastic evening. Yeah. What's your day been like? What technology have you used? Have you used some of the technology that Charlie has? This tidal wave of technology is coming whether we like it or not. And it's up to us to decide whether we are going to be the disruptors or the disrupted. I would like to introduce you to someone. This is Charlie, and she's six and three quarters. And her future lies in our hands. 
her and her friends and peers and the generations to come need to be enabled. We need to invest now. We need to lead now so that she and her friends can lead in the future. We need to help them be the creators, the innovators, the inventors. We need to help them be the disruptors. What do we say, Charlie? Thank you. Thank you.